The Data Cloud Diaries, step-by-step -step data stream to data lake to data model objects. Welcome to another chapter of the Data Cloud Diaries. So we're diving deep into Data Cloud, and today we're gonna to take two files and we're gonna load them again as a data stream, create them as data lake objects, and then carry them all the way forward to data model objects. And we're gonna watch this step from beginning to end. So here we are in a data cloud environment. I'm gonna be specifying an OA um, data set, which is a filter I put on the list view. And that's because there is an open source, our airports, I mentioned this before in a previous video, where you're able to download open source data on airports, airport frequencies, comments, runways, nav aids, countries, and regions. So what I have done is I've downloaded these files and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take two of them today and we're gonna load them all the way through to data model objects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here and create a new stream, Amazon S3. And now we're gonna do is start entering the, in, the information. Now in a previous video, I showed I, how I have a bucket, STA demo. I have a folder, our airports, and I dragged in and put in these files. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be configuring the source. So what I have here is I put in my bucket name, my access key and secret key used for the user to get access, the directory, our airports, the file name, and here's where I'm designating the source from the external system, in this case, our airports, hitting next, and now it's accessing the file. And now I'm choosing a data lake object. This is where we're gonna add a brand new data lake object. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be giving this the name OA airport, and I'm gonna call it Amazon S3 to designate that it's coming through Amazon. Now, this will be an other object because it's not about a person as profile and it's not about engagement, which is activity. This is reference data as other. Now, I know that the key is ID and I wanna double check and make sure it came across as a text. So that's an important step. If it had other foreign keys, we need to make sure they come in as text for proper linking. So I'm gonna designate this as an ID. So I've examined the data stream, made sure that the only numbers are things that are true numbers. And now I'm gonna hit next. Now a key thing here is we're gonna to decide to put it in a data space, which will give it a segmented location for privacy. We're gonna choose upsert. We're, since this file, we're controlling its access. We're gonna say right now not to put an undo load. We're gonna say no refresh schedule. And then we're gonna say deploy. So this is creating the new data stream. And it's being deployed. So now we see the data stream, the fields, and this is here. So we have now created the new data stream. Let's go ahead and create the next one. So I've hit new data stream, Amazon, and now I'll fill out this data. So what I've typed in is the bucket name. Again, I've entered the access key, the CSV, the folder, directory, the file name, runways. We're bringing this in from the Our Airport source. I'm gonna hit next. We're gonna choose a new data lake object. We're gonna give it OA, runway, Amazon S3. I'm also, this is also other data. Now I'm gonna look at the ID and it is a text. I also have learned from my loads that there's a reference airport data here, which should not be a number. This is actually the key in a numeric form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to text for that way I can get proper linkages when I create relationships. And I know that that's the only foreign key here. So I, I've examined the data types, set it correctly. At this point, I don't need any formula fields, but I do need to designate the primary key. And now that I've got my new object, data stream set up, I hit next. Now I'm gonna designate it into the data space and I'm gonna designate it with no frequency and a refresh file immediately. And let's deploy.
Oh, I need to designate that it's an upsert. That means that it'll be a replace existing data with new updated data versus a full refresh. And now it's creating. Okay. So now if I go to my data streams, I have created two data streams and they are both in the OA Airport Amazon S3 and OA Runway S3. And they're both accessed and they'll be loading in the next minute or two. And so now after a couple of minutes of waiting, you can see that I've hit refresh and that you can see that we've loaded 76,000 airports with 45,000 associated runways. And these are now in our data stream. We go to the data lake object, and we now see that we have these two objects in our data lake. So let's go take a look at the airport object. So here is our airport object, and it is now a data lake. That means it's in the, the structured objects, but not, not actionable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna map this over to our data model, data cloud data model objects. There's a really nice, if you have a brand new object, there's a really easy way to do that. I'm gonna hit the start on the data mapping. So this is for the first object. And this allows us to map and gives us a really powerful mapping. We're gonna make this really easy today. We'll show, because we're just creating a brand new object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new object here. And we're gonna make on the custom data model, new custom object. Now it's made the guesses according to, first we're gonna choose all the fields and it's made assumptions on the value types. So the only thing I'm just giving it a quick double check, make sure the primary key is a text and the enable value suggestion is a feature in data cloud where if you're, it'll then look for suggested values. We'll be going over that in a subsequent conversation. Um, right now we're gonna leave these unchecked, but we'll do a couple of for the value suggestions, maybe like the type um, and maybe the municipality. We'll just pick a couple of these. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit save. And what we've done is we've created the data stream, which created the data lake. And now we're doing the data lake to create the data model. And so now we have the mappings. You can see on the left is the data lake object. And these are all one-to-one -one mappings because we're creating the target from the source. And once we're in a, we've in a good place, we could add any modifications. We're gonna hit save and close. Now there's just a quick little warning on logging, but it's successfully added the mappings. And now we have a data model object here. And this data model object is now ready for us to take our data cloud actions because we have the, this object ready to go. Now, while we wait for it to process, we're going to the runway object. We're gonna follow the same process. So we're gonna hit the mapping. We're gonna then create a brand new custom object based off of this. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is taking away the Amazon S3. And then what I'll do is I'll, in a subsequent video, I'll have reloaded, but I wanna show you. So we're gonna take OA Runway. It's gonna inherit the data category from the previous, from the source, which is other. We're gonna let all the fields come in here and hit save. And then we're gonna save and close. Just get a little logging error, but we successfully have the mapping. So we go to our data model and we refresh. And now we have the runway plus the airport. So this allows, shows us how our data is now ready. We can go to the data explorer. So first we can check 
the Data Lake object on the airport, and we can see our data. Then we can switch to our Data Model object on the airport and see our data. So what we have done is the data streams are the feeds in from the data sources. The data lakes are the pretty much the pool of data that's come in in its original format um, from the data source. Now in the data model is where you have your more abstracted, um, genericized model that you're gonna use. But in our case, since we're bringing these in as reference data, we didn't need to map these to the standard um, data model objects. We actually created target objects for them. In a subsequent load, I'll have changed the name, get rid of the Amazon S3. I don't think I can change it here. Let's edit it. Oh, I can. But it'll have changed the API name. So we'll fix this in a subsequent load. And now what I have is I have the two objects in the data model. And this shows us how to take data stream to data lake to data model. We even were able to adjust the field. And what we're gonna be doing is in subsequent videos, we're gonna start talking about building relationships and linking the data to objects. So we're building on our journey, coming in, bringing the files, putting them in a, in a source where Salesforce Data Cloud can get to them, S3. You can even have automated scripts that could be uploading to S3. Salesforce will see that with your data stream, bring it in and put it into your data lake objects, which are representations of the source. Then you're gonna have your target data model objects, which we're gonna then be using for all of our key data cloud features. In our situation, we just brought this exact mappings over. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how to do specialized mapping. And then we're gonna start continue moving forward with using data cloud. Thank you for joining as we step through the objects. Join us again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to www.stevetechark.com and Steve Tech Arc on YouTube and have a great day.